Have you ever pondered the curious notion that in the grand scheme of things, digital doesn't really exist? It's a thought that might seem absurd at first glance considering the influx of digital media, digital television, digital clocks, and digital music that envelop our everyday lives. But brace yourselves because the reality is much more analog than you might think. Yes, you heard it right. Digital, in essence, does not truly exist. What we have, what we always had, and what we always will have is analog. Intriguing, right? Let's delve into this a bit more. Let's start by understanding the fundamental concepts of analog and digital signals. Imagine analog as the natural unbroken rhythm of the world around us. It's the bird song echoing through the mountains, the soothing hum of the sea, the whispering of the wind, all these continuous uninterrupted waves that exist in nature, that's analog for you. Even our words, the ones you're hearing right now, are analog signals. Take something as simple as a vinyl record or a cassette tape. These are quintessential examples of analog media. They record the universe's analog sounds as they are, capturing every nuance, every variation. When you play them back, they reproduce the recorded wavelengths in all their glory. But remember, with the good comes the bad. Along with the intended sound, these mediums also record noise, unwanted sound from the environment. This noise, typically following a Gaussian distribution or white noise, is also an analog signal. Now you might be wondering, where does digital come into the picture? Well, the concept of digital is a human-made construct. We've developed systems to convert these continuous analog signals into a format that's easier for machines to understand and process. That's what digital is, a simplified, quantized version of the complex analog world. But at the end of the day, the reality remains analog. So next time you find yourself engrossed in a digital book or jamming to some digital music, spare a thought for the analog world behind it all. It's a world that's rich, complex, and beautifully real, a world that's always been there and a world that's not going anywhere. Remember, digital may be our present, but analog is our reality. The first rule of channel is subscribe channel. Second rule of channel is click like. This channel will make you smart. Ever wondered how digital signals are created? It's a fascinating process that begins with the transformation of an analog signal. This is accomplished through a two-step process, sampling followed by quantization. Sampling is the act of dividing an analog signal into specific sections and retaining only the size. Essentially what happens is that a continuous signal is converted into a discontinuous one. While this signal is still technically in analog form, it's been segmented by cutting the analog signal at regular intervals and discarding the remaining signal. This is done because capturing the exact analog signal would require a massive amount of information. Quantization, the second step, is the classification and segmentation of signals according to a certain size. For example, all signals between 0 and 2 volts are transformed into 1 volt, all signals between 2 and 4 volts become 3 volts, and all signals between 4 and 6 volts are turned into 5 volts. With sampling and quantization completed, the stage is set for the creation of the digital signal. This is achieved by assigning numbers to the analog signals that have been sampled and quantized. For instance, all 0 to 2 volt signals that came 1 volt through quantization are numbered as 00. 0. 2 to 4 volt signals that became 3 volts are numbered 01. And 4 to 6 volt signals that became 5 volts are numbered 10. To simplify this, imagine a random analog signal is generated. This signal reaches a system via a microphone or another receiver. If the signal is above 5 volts, the system records it as 1. If it's below 5 volts, it records it as 0. This results in a series of 1s and zeros like this, 10111010111101, which we refer to as a digital signal. But here's the twist. These 1s and zeros are also analog signals. They're recognized as ones and zeros, but they're ultimately analog signals with a certain amount of current or voltage determined by the system. All signals above 5 volts are converted to electrical signals with a magnitude of 2 volts and recorded, and signals below 5 volts are recorded as 0 volts. In reality, there aren't just ones and zeros. 
What exists are analog signals of a size that is intended to be interpreted as one, and analog signals of a size meant to be recognized as zero. What we end up hearing is another analog signal that's been restored to resemble the original analog signal as closely as possible. So to sum it up, the creation of digital signals involves the transformation of analog signals through a two-step process of sampling and quantization. This process results in a series of ones and zeros, which, contrary to popular belief, are also analog signals. The ones and zeros are then converted back into analog signals to produce the sounds we hear. The first rule of channel is subscribe channel. Second rule of channel is click like. This channel will make you smart. Have you ever wondered how digital signals work? How the world of ones and zeros translates into the images, sounds and data we interact with every day? Today we're diving into the fascinating realm of digital signals, breaking down this complex concept into digestible parts. Imagine a vast ocean with waves ebbing and flowing. This could represent an analog signal, a continuous wave that can have any number of values. Now think of a digital signal as a series of steps, each step representing a different value. This process of transforming the ocean waves into a staircase of values is what we call digitization. In this transformation, two key processes take place, sampling and quantization. Picture a painter trying to capture the ocean on a canvas. The painter can't paint every single wave, so she selects specific points to represent the entire scene. This is similar to sampling, where the analog signal is recorded at specific intervals. A higher sampling rate, like a painter making more frequent observations, results in a more accurate representation of the original signal. Next comes quantization. This is where each sampled point is assigned a value from a specific set of possible values. The more values we have to choose from, the less information we lose, and the clearer the original analog signal can be recorded. Consider a 32-bit digital system running at 100 MHz. It's like a system that divides the signal into sections and samples it a million times per second, or a 3.5 GHz 64-bit system which classifies signals into eight levels and samples 3.5 billion times per second. And what happens when we need the original analog signal again? We simply reverse the process. The higher the sampling rate and the more detailed the quantization, the more accurate the signal transmission and reception. So if all signals are essentially analog, why bother digitizing them? The simple answer is noise. Analog signals are increasingly affected by noise as time passes, and as they journey through multiple devices. Think of the crackling sound you hear when listening to the roar of a lion. That's noise. Digital signals, on the other hand, can maintain their form over time and through multiple devices, preserving the original information without additional noise. To wrap it up, digital signals exist in our perception, but all signals are fundamentally analog. It's a complex world of technology, where even the simplest explanation is an approximation. There are many more aspects to consider, like encryption technology or noise removal filters. But we hope this basic understanding of digital signals has sparked your curiosity to learn more. Remember, the world of ones and zeros is not as binary as it seems. It's an ocean of analog signals waiting to be explored. The first rule of channel is subscribe channel. Second rule of channel is click like. This channel will make you smart.